Hey what is up guys, today I'd like to talk about how I maxed an old school runescape. So in my last video I talked about how I maxed pretty inefficiently and did methods that I liked instead of what the meta is and I got a lot of comments asking for a video on it and that's what leads us here. I feel like it goes without saying, but this is not the efficient or fastest methods, I just did what I enjoyed or what I thought was fun. I think we're going to go in the order that I maxed as well, so let's just go ahead and let's get it started. My first 99 was cooking. Cooking was a skill that I mostly did while I was playing Call of Duty, Hearthstone, or probably at the time even something like Overwatch. I basically cooked the best thing I could until I got the sharks, and then did sharks to 99. Many people wait until you stop burning sharks, but with the cooking gauntlets, as soon as you can start cooking them, you still profit and get a huge XP boost. It's super easy to AFK and watch some Netflix or whatever else you want to do while you're cooking. After cooking, I made myself an okay little cash stack and decided that I would do another profitable 99. Because of this, I started to train fletching. I fletched the best bows that I could all the way to 99. I didn't string the bows, I just cut them, and I started doing magic longbow unstrung as soon as I could. And I want to say that after doing cooking and fletching, I had made my first 10 mil or green cash stack in old school runescape. After fletching was strength, and there's not really a lot to say here, I did all of my strength training through Slayer. I would like to take a second here and ask you guys to please smash the like button for me. You guys have really been killing it for me and helping the videos get pushed to more and more people and growing the community that we have here. I appreciate everyone who watches, comments, and likes the videos. It really does mean a lot to me. I try to respond to every YouTube comment that I get, but if you'd like to keep up with what I'm doing better and to join our community and chat outside of YouTube, I'll throw my Discord link down in the description. We've currently got a little over 30 people who hang out and chat while we play. After grinding through quite a bit of Slayer and hitting 99 strength, I found myself with enough gold to bang out 99 construction, and so I bought all the oak planks that I needed and did oak ladders to 74, and then dungeon doors to 99. I think I spent all the gold I had, but the thing about me is that I like to rebuild after a big accomplishment. It revitalizes my want to play, and I'd say it was well worth it. Construction is just a useful 99, and having it as your fourth 99 really makes you stand out in a group of players. After construction, my next 99s were attack and defense. Again, all completely done through Slayer. After defense, I had enough money laying around to go get 99 prayer, so I went to world 330 and used dragon bones on someone else's gilded altar so that I didn't have to light the burners myself because I'm lazy. I would use their jewelry box to go back to Edgeville uh, and bank, grab more bones, and then tell you back to Port Serum House Portal with my construction cape for the next trip. The next 99 after this was range. I also did this mostly through Slayer cannoning and just range only tasks like Brutal Black Dragons, but all of the XP that I got that wasn't through Slayer was done at Wyverns while I was working or watching Netflix. If I had to do it over, I would probably do this chinning just to save all the extra time, and chinning isn't terribly click intensive anyway, but Wyverns are a good option if you don't really want to play and you're looking to profit. After range, I ended up with 99 Slayer. I used the highest level master that I could until I could use Duradel, and then I just did Duradel with 99. I focused mainly on doing tasks that I liked, and it made me money, and skipped the tasks I didn't like, and blocked the highest weighted tasks that I didn't like. Pretty much any of the AFK tasks I would do, because it was nice and relaxed. I didn't do a ton of boss tasks on the way to 99 either. I think I did like half a grotesque guardian task, but didn't really touch the other bosses. In hindsight, I should have done way more diagonal tasks at DK's or smoke devils at Thermi, but I just didn't find them fun at the time. With the money from Slayer, I knocked out 99 Herbler. I tried to do Herbler a more balanced method instead of strictly focusing on saving money or getting it the quickest. I wanted a nice middle ground. I did prayer potions to 45 and then moved on to super attacks until I hit 66, then super defense until 77. At 77, I swapped to making stamina potions and did that all the way to 95, where I started doing Ceradermon Bruise instead to knock out the last little bit to 99. I also used the Amulet of Chemistry basically from level 77 onwards. After Herbler, I went ahead and did 99 crafting because I wanted the super close teleport to a bank. I did battle staffs until 63 crafting, which is when I started doing green dragon hide bodies, did green dehide bodies until I unlocked blue, and then I did blue until I unlocked black. I skipped over the red bodies because they were too much more expensive for not that much more XP, but once I unlocked the black dehide bodies, I just did that all the way until 99. After crafting, I went into a period of playing more games and wanted to play more League of Legends, Overwatch, Hearthstone, and Call of Duty in particular so I wanted something AFK. It was at this point that I decided to do fishing. I did barbarian fishing all the way to 99 because I wanted the passive agility XP, 
I didn't do any tech manipulation or anything, just good old fashioned AFK barb fishing. With Temporos being newly released, I would recommend at least trying it. It's a totally safe encounter and I find it to be quite fun and you get really good XP. It's still relatively low effort and helps break up the normal fishing grind quite a bit. After fishing, what I did was woodcutting. I did Teak's AFK until I could do Redwoods and then did Redwoods 99. Not a lot to say, just super easy and AFK XP. I'm honestly not sure if this is the best way, but it is what I did. After I hit 99 woodcutting, I wasn't done AFKing, so I figured I'd do magic as well, but I did magic training at Wyverns and got 99 mage using my best fire spell. It wasn't bad XP at all, and I made money doing it, so I'd call it a win. People laughed at me being in full ancestral and fire waving wyverns, but it was hard to notice because I was too busy getting flamed out on Call of Duty for quick scoping anyway. Around this time, I got a new job, and as long as my work was done, they didn't care as much about my phone being out, and I wanted to AFK while I was there, so I landed on trying to go for 99 smithing. I did 99 smithing by smelting gold ore at the Edgeville Furnace until 74, and then I did Addy Dart tips to 99. I did this all on mobile and all while at work. I tried to do Blast Furnace, and I ended up doing like 3 hours and burn out and quit the game for a week. Never went back. I might actually still have gold in the coffers there now that I think about it. My method is probably not the one I would recommend. A decent middle ground between Blast Furnace and Dart Tips would probably be adamant plate bodies, however you are going to spend a decent chunk of GP doing this. For thieving, I did 55 to 99 at Artie Knights. I will not do Pyramid Plunder or Blackjacking ever again. I blackjacked until I could do Pyramid Plunder in RS3 and did Pyramid Plunder to 99. I much preferred the Artie Knight method. It was good money, really good XP, and it's stupid easy on mobile. You just tap in the same place over and over. After they introduced the money bags, I had to actually look at my screen once a minute or so to open them, but otherwise I didn't look at my phone at all while training it. Up next is farming. I didn't get a single point of farming XP that wasn't from quests or tree runs. I didn't do a single herb run, no allotments, just trees. Basically the best wood tree and fruit tree I could do until magics or palms, and then I did those alongside mahogany and calquats to 99. In hindsight here, I should have done more hispori, I think I have like 100 seeds I've not used, and a decent amount of spirit seeds as well for that matter, which would have saved me time, but oh well, just more seeds for post 99 XP now. The next cape that I unlocked after farming was agility, and I basically just did the best rooftop course that I could. I'm pretty sure that the Sepulchre came out when I was already doing Artie and I didn't feel like changing, but I didn't do Prif as I don't have Song of the Elves done. Mining is what I did after, and it's pretty easy, I just did all Motherload mine until 98. Also done while working. I stopped at 98 because I knew that I was going to do Blood Runes and that the last one mill would come passively from Blood Rune crafting, and that's exactly what happened. I wanted to try Amethyst mining, but never got around to it. If you enjoy Amethyst, then I'm sure it would help break up the grind some. Speaking of, right after getting 99 mining, I ended up getting 99 runecrafting as well. For runecrafting, I did ZMI until 77 and then did blood runes all the way to 99. Pre-77, I put every lamp, Tears of Guthic's reward, and Diary reward into runecrafting because I HATED ZMI. A small tip though for ZMI is if you plan on doing it, don't right click and follow someone else because you tend to get stuck on the obstacles there. You want to use an item on them so that your character follows their pathing a bit closer, resulting in it being less stressful and you getting stuck less often. Now that Day Alt Essence is a thing, I would have mined enough for 77, as it's AFK to get, and then I would have banged out 77 as it's less actual time spent runecrafting inside of ZMI this way. After runecrafting, we were down to the last two skills, which are Hunter and Fire Making. For Hunter, I basically did the best lizard I could until I could do Maniacal Monkeys after Monkey Madness 2. Then I just did Maniacal Monkeys to 99 Hunter. These are very chill to do, I'd bring a full inventory of baskets of bananas, and then bank and come back when I ran out of bananas. I didn't bother with bones of the bananas as it made it too tedious, and I got XP rates around 60 to 80k an hour anyway. I ended up getting 3 monkey tail drops, which were 1 in 5k a piece, and 2 were in the same inventory, so that was a little saddening for me. The monkey tails have the same drop rates as most pets in the game. So I ended up getting three monkey tails instead of three pets, and the more that I think about it, the more sad that I get. Oh well though. Right after getting 99 Hunter, I went to Winter Todd and got 99 Fire Making at Winter Todd. It took basically no time, I think I got 99 in like two days after getting 99 Hunter. It was fast and definitely better than manually clicking and starting fires for redwood logs in my opinion. 
But as you guys can see, I didn't do almost any efficient or meta methods. If there was a slow AFK way to do something, I normally chose that because that's just my playstyle. I really think I rival Mudkip in terms of least efficient max player, and just goes to show that anybody can max link methods they enjoy. There is no need to 2 tick fish or lava runes to 99 if you don't want to. If you enjoy these methods, then by all means, please do them. You'll hit your goals much faster than I did, but they just aren't personally for me. That's all that I have for today's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. I believe I'm going to try to stream tonight around 7 or 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you see me on, feel free to come, hang out, let me know what you think of the video. I hope to see you all either in the stream or in the next video. See ya!